If for $30 I could have a go-kart engine, I would do it. Here on Redneck Computer Geek, we keep it honest. That worked awesome. This, on the other hand, after about 15 minutes of runtime, gave in. So I'm going to pull this back out. I'm going to put a washer underneath it. I'm going to see if it just was a design flaw in the plastic. But... I think... Yeah, right there, I can actually flex the plastic. So, I don't think that's going to work, but we'll monkey with it a little bit further. Why you truly clicked on this video. Predator engines are no longer $100. In fact, a lot of them in my area are $160. And most of the sales that do drop them down into the $100 range are based on well supplies last, in store only. Therefore, generator engines that have become plentiful in all the junkyards, if you could potentially convert it over to use for $30, with one of these Chinese kits that are showing up all over eBay and Amazon right now, it would be worth it. If for $30 I could have a go-kart engine, I would do it. This kit, on the other hand, does not instill a giant amount of confidence in me. Granted, for the price, it really shouldn't. So it supposedly includes a governor kit, except for... It's missing the hog ring, but that really doesn't matter because there's no location to put the hog ring on the governor pin replacement thingy. That is not in the sales flyer. This is made out of the same kind of weird gasket material as the Kohler 7000s that love to blow up their valve covers and then light themselves on fire by dripping everything on the exhaust. Well, let me just walk over here with this. I'm not usually the size matters person, but yeah, that's not right. On top of that, I don't understand why it comes with two bearings. Now granted, the bearings do look to be the correct size, but really what it should be is a bearing and a seal. This is not in the kit. This is from another standard gasket kit that I ordered up. And I do know that these kits fit these Predators, so I will include a link. For buying that, I'll include a link for this in case you want to traumatize yourself with me. The other thing is, we flip this over, and I have cut myself and nicked myself twice just monkeying around with this. There are sand casting spots where I have chipped off little bits and stuff all over the place. Here's a PSA for you. If you magically all of a sudden gain oil that wasn't there before, you did not gain oil. What you gained was either a stuck float or a needle valve that is not closing correctly, and it drained gasoline into your cylinder, down through your cylinder wall, into your crankcase, I need to fix that carburetor, but I really don't care that much. By the way, that was brand spanking new, fresh oil, and that's an hour of runtime. This engine's perfect. Well, at least finding all that oil explains why it was splashing up as much as it was. 
So we've got a couple of tabs that are right here on this generator case that I'm assuming we can tap on. Judging from all the oil mixed with gasoline coming out, we got that right. I wonder if somebody was already in this thing because it almost looks like two gaskets coming out. We got most of it in the cat litter container. Alright, cat litter container repositioned. Let's pull this off. So there's our crank. There's our cam. We're going to rotate this thing around until we get the dots lined up so that we know the cam is where it's supposed to be just in case we drop anything. There's the side cover for the generator. Make sure you guys can see what we're talking about here. So what we can see is we're missing a reinforcement there, which I don't know if that's critical by any means. It's interesting, this one is way thinner. That one is way thinner. A bunch of these don't exist on the Predator case. At, oh, I see, so that's the difference there, is the casting for those holes. So that's why this has things that don't exist on this one. Let's see whether these actually fit. There is a lot of wear on that crank, but let's see if these actually fit. Okay, so that's a good sign if we can manage to actually get them into that case piece. Now, I'm going to do another video where I do the governor delete on this thing. We're going to do a separate video on that because I want to do a follow-up. But for now, just to make sure... Wow, that's a lot of play. We're going to rotate this till we get that dot and that dot to line up. That way, if anything happens, we can pull the cam. Now, a lot of people have asked if I could do a cam welding video. We might get into the cam welding idea and see whether we can weld the cam with our piece of junk little 110 welder setup, maybe? Just for the heck of it? I don't know. You guys tell me what you would do. Would you grab, like, some 7000 rod and weld it on there? Or would you use a MIG welder to weld it on? What would you guys do? I've had a bunch of requests from the Predator community. I will post up a picture of the cam gear with its numbers at the end of the video. But what I wanted to show you was there is the governor gear. We're going to try the blowtorch method to take that out in a later video. And there is where your oil shutoff sensor comes in. And as you can see, it is within millimeters of the cam. There is your oil shutoff sensor that we will be removing when we do the governor delete video. But for now, we're just going to see if this side cover will actually fit. If you're a real engine builder, I would suggest not watching this next part. But I think what we're going to do is put some lube on there. And see if we can get it to cough twice. There we go, we got that hammered into there, literally. We've got our seal that goes on the outside. So I probably should put some lube on that seal, but at this point, I just want to see if it'll even manage to go on. So we're going to push it in with our fingers so that it is level with that outside rim. See right there? Anytime you're doing one of these seals, you want to really look up what it is that they're actually supposed to be in at. 
Like a lot of the Kohlers will actually be offset from this bearing by a good solid like centimeter or so. So don't just push it all the way until you hit the bearing. All right. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Oh, we got some extra oil on there. Whatever. Let's see. That is wrong. Which direction do we need to go here? There we go. Okay, so does not fit the punch out there. But we were able to squishy it and get it on there. Does not fit the alignment pin here. But we were able to squishy it. That gasket is absolutely horrifying. I do not like that gasket. But I promised I was going to go with as much of the Chinesium kit as I could. So that's what we're doing. Why are we not bottoming out? Oh, there it goes. So, at some point here, we should feel the cam slip in. Which is why we really should be doing this with the engine unbolted, so that we can get the cam to drop in. I'm going to reach in with a screwdriver and tap the cam up and see if it'll drop in. Alright, we're going to reach in, uh, lift up our cam a little bit. Right there, I can see that it's lined up, so let's... What are we not clearing here? Alright, we repositioned you guys. Let's see what we got going on here. We have... 14.2 millimeter. We have 13.9 millimeter, so that's not going to work. Fourteen point one five. Well, let's find some sandpaper. Some projects are just about seeing how much hair you can rip out. Went in, ground it down with that until the cam was able to fit and it came up right on the calipers. Went to put the side on and that is not very promising. I don't know what's going on right now. I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. It seems I gave myself some foreshadowing that I did not realize I had done. That one is not fitting, and that one is not fitting. They're in the right spot, but they are the wrong size. We're going to keep telling ourselves we're doing this to save money. Ignore the fact that we're already through an entire can of brake cleaner. Ignore the fact that I'm three hours into this absolute stupidity. So... Ignore that the bearing is just barely not quite right. But it does fit if you get lovable with it. And now, hopefully, I haven't destroyed the gasket, which I don't trust, because it's made out of the same stuff that explodes on Kohler's. But at this point, I think we might actually get a side cover on we're doing this to save money remember not that we really are at this point considering how much stupidity i've been through with this there's 
one there so that we don't forget it. There's the other one over here so that we can put it in. Now let's pull the crank and see if it actually turns. Actually, here, we got a three-quarter inch hub. We'll put this on so that... Oh, crap. We'll leave that there so you can see if it turns. There we go. We're almost there, saving money. I gotta laugh and show you this. We're putting our oil in. This is a Honda slash Duramax whatever fill. And these things are great because you put it in and then you rotate it. And it's supposed to be straight up and down when you rotate it. This thing is so janky that the oil fill isn't actually drilled or in the right angle. Here we go. Let's see if this goes great or explodes on us. We'll put the choke on. Put our foot on the table. Choke on. Hey, look at that. If you put the kill wire on something nice and pretty and polished, it actually works. Hi, right, guys. Now, look. I get that some of you are troglodytes and you don't like the 3D printed experiments. But the real reality is plastic in all engine production has skyrocketed. And if we don't start being able to replace things, you're going to pay what they want you to pay. Polycarbonate, clear, made with aluminum housing, a hundred dollar bill. I saved myself a hundred dollar bill in making you guys this video using this. This intake, nobody makes this 90 degree intake. It doesn't exist. I created it myself because nobody made it. This I will post up a link to down in the description. This is still a work in progress, but if I get it more sorted out and I get it figured out more, I will post it up in a future video. As it is right now, we have figured out that this filter is on the wrong side. Now I understand why it is the hole for the PCV valve is on the other side on the stock one. I did it on that side to avoid dealing with the spark plug wire. It was a screw up on my part. But that's why you guys watch this channel, is because I show you both what works and what I failed with, because we keep it real on this channel. Alright, on the next step with this, we're going to be working with cutting down the shaft so that we can get the three-quarter on, just to show the fact that it's doable. We'll probably put a go-kart clutch on it, even though that's not what's going to be on it in the final project. But, just for the giggles of it, we'll put a go-kart clutch onto it. Thank you, everybody. We'll be flipping it on its side soon.